morning everyone Janie here welcome back to my garden so it is obviously pretty bright outside today I've got my new Sun hat on my new favorite gardening hat uh, I wanted to show you guys this because um, I have a lot of trouble finding hats that fit my head I don't I guess I have a big head I never thought that I had a big head but every time I buy hats I get those little lines right here on my forehead and I hate that um, so I found these gardening hats and you can actually measure the size of your head um, and then buy the hat that will actually fit you um, so I'm in love with this hat and you guys will probably see me wearing it a lot so just wanted to say that um, and then today I am in my backyard and I'm finally going to address this little trio of pots that I have right here my topiaries um, my topiaries are in it. This is my Texas privet. This is a juniper that I actually got off the, um, the clearance rack at Lowe's. So I don't even know the type of juniper or anything, but it's a spiral juniper. I have not touched these guys since last year. So they definitely need to be trimmed. Um, and I'm a little nervous about trimming them, uh, just cause I don't want to mess it up. Uh, but I'm going to go slow and I'm going to step back, you know, basically take one cut, step back and look at it, take one cut, step back and look at it. Um, and then I want to plant some uh, plants underneath it. Uh, so I did find those Royal Velvet Super Tunias at, um, at Lowe's the other day. So I was thinking about planting some under here. Um, and then also I was at Home Depot getting a little bit of soil this morning and I found some Super Tunia Sky Blue. So all different colors of purple. I do have this Super Bina uh, Sparkling Amethyst Proven Winners and I love it and it's gorgeous and I do need to cut it back, but I think I'm gonna leave the blooms on it until I do my backyard garden tour for this month. And then right after that, I'll cut it back and let it kind of flush back out. Um, so you'll see what I'm talking about. Well, let me turn around and show you guys right now. Okay, so here's the little planter trio and I'm absolutely obsessed with these. I think they look so beautiful, especially next to my honeysuckle, which is blooming by the way. Side note, it smells amazing out here. It's so wonderful. And my girls and I were out here the other day and um, we're actually sucking the honey off of the honeysuckle. I had never done it before, but my daughters were showing me how to do it, which I thought was awesome. So loving that. Okay, so back to the pots. I got these pots from Home Depot. They look like concrete, but they're not. They're actually fiberglass. They're really light. Let can you hear that? Um, and they're from a brand called MPG Planters. And I'll tell you guys, they're really hard to find. So if you find them, if you see that they're in stock, grab them. They come in a bunch of different colors too. But I really love them. They've held up really well. So here is my Texas Privet. It's like a ball topiary. It doesn't even look like it right now, but it will after I finish um, pruning it. I was going to let it flower. You can see the flowers are coming. The flowers are pretty nondescript. They're like little white flowers. Hours, but I really want to get that, um, you know, that tight uh, trimmed ball look at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and prune those back. Underneath here, I had some dark sweet potato vine and some white Supertunia Vista snowdrift. And I thought they were going to die, but look at right there. I have the Super Tunia uh, Vista Snowdrift already starting to bloom. So I think I'm just gonna kind of clean these old sticks up. I have, looks like I have one and one back there. So two of the Super Tunia Vista Snowdrift. Oh, those are blooming back there too, cool. And then I think I'm gonna put in some Royal Velvet and Royal Velvet. I'm not even gonna try and put in the Super Tunia Blue Sky in with the Super Tunia Snowdrift because I tried the Blue Sky with bubblegum, which was a giant mistake. It was like there was no Blue Sky because the bubblegum totally took over. And Super Tunia Vista Snowdrift is almost as vigorous as the bubblegum, so I don't even wanna bother um, putting those in the same pot because I think the Snowdrift will just take it over. I have a feeling the Snowdrift might also take over the Royal Velvet as well. Well, um, but might as well try it. You know, Royal Velvet is a little bit more vigorous, but um, it's definitely not a Vista. So that's my plan is to, under, to clean this up, underplant those. This is um, Supertunia, su uh, let's see, Superbina, 
sparkling amethyst uh, verbena. And it is, I just love this plant. This is Jason's favorite plant. It's gorgeous. Um, but if you can see, if you look top down, I definitely need to cut it back. Um, so it looks really pretty from this side here. Um, but I think that if I cut it back and let it flush back out, it'll be a little bit more dense. These have, um, these were from last year. So these winter over in our zone. Um, so they're such a wonderful plant. I absolutely love this plant. Um, I would have this plant all over my yard <laughs> if I if were up to me. They also have a different color called Super Tunia, or excuse me, <laughs> Super Bina Sparkling Rosé, which is like a pink version of this. You can see it's a bunch of different colors and, I'll, and it, it does. It looks like it sparkles in the sun. Um, and I want to try the pink version. So hopefully I can find that at the store somewhere. And then I think in my um, underplanting my juniper topiary, which I have to clean that up and I'm very nervous about that. It's not the most beautiful juniper spiral just simply because I got it from uh, the clearance rack. But I mean, it was a $50 spiral, so it was totally worth it. But you can see it's a little brown in there, um, but I don't care. I, you know, it was, a, it was a total find and I was really happy about that. So I think I'm gonna put the Super Tunia Sky Blue, which is a light lavender under there. So you'll see I have the um, sparkling amethyst, which is a whole bunch of different colors of purple. I have the sky blue, which is a light lavender color, like bluish lavender color. And then I have the royal velvet and the snowdrift over here. So it's just going to be kind of like this flush of different colors of purple. And I think it's going to be gorgeous. So that's my plan for today. The other thing I need to do is, um, let me see, there we go. I need to balance, like level all of the pots. We had moved all of them so that we could put, um, we had rock under here at the beginning of this year and we took all the landscape rock out and we replaced it with black mulch and then we didn't even bother leveling it. We just kind of threw them back into their spots. So I need to try and level it, but we don't have, like the right way to do it is to put some gravel underneath and um, give it a good base. And we definitely don't have a good base for these guys right here. So I'm gonna try and do my best, but um, you know, it might not be perfect. And I think in the long run, that's a project that I'm gonna need to do. Let me go around the pool so you guys can see it from another view. Okay, so I'm on the other side of the pool now and you can see they're just kind of a little wonky. Um, they're not level and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get them perfectly level, um, but it's cl it's close enough. So I love this view. This is the view that I see um, inside my living room and I have, um, these are honeysuckle, Hall's Japonica honeysuckle, and then these are limelight hydrangeas. And then I have this little trio of pots and I have my bird feeders right there. And I just love this. I love this area of my yard. I think it's absolutely gorgeous, especially when the limelight start coming. So I really, I think that if you just take, you know, one spot of your yard and just start with one spot and get it to exactly how you love it. Um, then you can get motivated to do another spot of your yard. Mine is over there. <laughs> this one right here that I need to do. So, <laughs> but I have this one that I love. So I'm going to focus on this one for right now and get these pots all shaped up for today. Okay. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is try and level the pots so that when I go in to prune them, um, you know, and, and trim them up. They're not crooked because the pots are not straight. <laughs> and then when I prune them, I'm planning to use my snips simply to slow me down and to keep me, you know, thinking about each cut that I do make. So let's see if I can level these pots.
Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it at that for today. I, you know, I just don't wanna take too much off too quickly and then regret taking too much off. So I think it looks okay. Um, you know, I probably could cut this a little bit better, but this had kind of a, like a blank spot right there. So, um, like you can see, this is, this is all the old growth and then this is the new growth. And I wanted to let it fill out a little bit. I didn't want it to be as small as the old growth and I like what the new growth looks like. So like I said, I will leave it at that. What is Stanley yelling at? What's wrong? Huh? What's wrong? You grumpy? <laughs> He's a grumpy old man, you guys. Okay, you guys, so now for the fun part where I'm actually gonna start planting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean back some of these old stems from the Supertunia last year. Again, this is Supertunia Vista Snowdrift and I'm in zone 9B. So it's not meant to last. Um, they say that there's still annuals in zone 9B, but um, sometimes they do winter over. And so I've heard of lo a lot of reports about specifically the bubblegum wintering over and my snowdrift has have wintered over and I have another pot over there where it did and then also um, uh, Bermuda Beach also wintered over as well. So I'm really excited about having that already. I think I have two plants here that did really well and then I just need to kind of clean them up a little bit and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant these royal velvet that I found at Lowe's the other day and these are gorgeous like a deep uh, purple color and royal velvet is a purple perfect purple name for it because it really does look like velvet. It's absolutely gorgeous. So Supertunia uh, Royal Velvet Petunia is not as vigorous as the Supertunia Vista Snowdrift. All the Vistas are way more vigorous like Bubblegum, um, Snowdrift, Paradise, Fuchsia. Those are all like they will get massive. Those are the ones that I plant in my front annual uh, border right in front of my lawn just because they get so big and I don't have to buy as many plants. Um, so because snowdrift is so much more vigorous than royal velvet, I'm going to do two royal velvets for every one of the snowdrift. So I'm assuming that there's two of the snowdrift plants here underneath um, uh, this privet, and uh, I'm going to put four of the royal velvets in there as well. And then I have the Supertunia Blue Skies Petunia, which is gorgeous. It has this beautiful, you know, it's that, that flower blue where it's technically a lavender, but you know, if you look at it, it does look really, this, this is probably the most blue I've seen of a petunia. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I just love it. It just totally mimics the sparkling amethyst and it's so gorgeous. I only got three of them when I was at Home Depot this morning and I wish I got more, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put them towards the front of this pot because nobody goes into the back, right? So, so there's no point to put anything in the back. Plus it's kind of shady back there. Um, so I think they will be really pretty like that. And then Proven Winners sent me, they contacted me and they thought that I would have a lot better luck if I used their continuous plant food when I was planting their super tunias and then also use their water soluble plant food uh, every week for my weekly fertilizing. And so they asked me if I wanted to try it and I said, of course, of course I want to try it. So thank you to Proven Winners for sending me this stuff. I'm really, really excited to see how all these plants do with this specific food that was, you know, really tailored for proven winter annuals. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm just, I'm super excited to try it this year. Um, so what I do is when I'm planting the annuals, I will mix in some of this uh, continue, premium continuous release plant food. And then uh, with my weekly watering, I, I uh, fertilize my annuals weekly in during the main season like the main growing season and i'm going to use this what they do say is they say remember to feed your annuals every third watering so i'm in zone 9b and we water all the time basically <laughs> because it's so dry and so hot here so the best thing that i found to do is just you know set a schedule every monday i go around and i fertilize my annuals and so i am going to use this guy this year and i'm really excited to try it so again thank you proven winners for that so i'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna get started and i'm going to clean these old stems up from last year one other thing I wanted to say to you guys, I was thinking as I was pruning this Texas privet is um, something to think about. If you do have a Texas privet, 
topiary and you need to prune it, you need to shape it. Um, one thing you need, if you, if you snip a leaf, like if you cut a leaf right there to shape it, the leaf is gonna get bruised and it's gonna get brown and it's not gonna look good. So what they say, that's why it was kind of taking me so long, is that if you want to prune this, you wanna prune it on the stem, um, you know, and go really slow as opposed to taking like um, hedging shears or something like that and cutting all the leaves, because then that'll leave brown like edges everywhere. So it's not like the juniper um, that's gonna do a little bit better. It's, um, it's, it's gonna, take a little bit more time and a little bit more finesse. Okay, so let's get started with cleaning this guy up and get it, getting it planted. Okay, you guys, so there it is. Doesn't it look good? So I think I could still trim up a little bit right there, um, but you know what? This is a really good first pruning of the season. Um, so this is kind of the view that I see from my living room, and you know, and then I walk back and forth um, from the back of the house to the kitchen all the time. So you're gonna start seeing some royal velvet with the snowdrift, with the white snowdrift right there. You have the blue skies back there, and then the beautiful sparkling amethyst right there. So it is so beautiful and it smells so good out here. I wish you guys could be here to smell it. So thank you all for joining me today. I'm super excited about these pots. I absolutely love them and I love the topiaries and the beautiful shades of purple underneath. Um, and I just love that this is one of the views that I see multiple, multiple times a day. So I encourage you guys to wherever you have one of those views where you always see stuff, make it as beautiful as you possibly can and something that you'll find joy in looking at whenever you walk by. So if you guys enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.